Uncontrollable, Chapter 2. As we walked to school, I felt more eyes on me than ever before. Whispers everywhere and eyes glancing and staring. Star noticed it too, but was more attentive to certain voices than me. I couldn't focus on what they were saying, but I could feel fear creeping up inside me. I started trying to breathe, just a few good breaths in and out to calm myself down before I was pulled into a classroom. A gentle pull, but quick. I couldn't push past the paranoid feeling that Jason and Devin did something to cause all of this uneasy chaos through the halls. If it was them, that could ruin mine and Star's reputation here, which I wasn't too worried about, or at least my reputation. I wish Star wasn't drugged down by any of this. I look over my shoulder as whoever was pulling me into a classroom stopped to close the door behind us, the softly lit room creeping me out slightly while our friends sat in a semicircle waiting for me and Star to sit down as well. I felt fear making the hairs on my arms stand up, a knot in my throat as I sit down and stare at them. The only thoughts running through my head were, oh my god, they found out. I shake my head as Star places a reassuring hand on my shoulder. So, what's going on? Star said softly, and made the others tense up. The silence was broken, and they all glanced at each other. Well... There have been some rumors going around, Cassie started anxiously, and I don't doubt the whole school has heard. Words go around in a small town quickly, so what are the rumors? Star said softly. I could feel her grip on my shoulder tighten. I'm not sure if it was to ground me better, I didn't know if she could tell how fast I was falling into a pit of fear, or if it was to prepare herself. Ava glanced at the others as they stayed silent before rolling her eyes, her leader-like demeanor showing strongly as she sat up a bit straighter. Fine, I'll say them, she starts. She mumbles the word chickens under her breath. The main one going around was that you were bred from a dog. How mature, right? She laughed softly. Fear burning its way to my chest started to subside, realizing my overthinking. A sigh of relief came as she continued. You're called a dog, too, to go along with it. I'm sure it's because of the... She stopped and looked at Maddie for a second. She smiled softly. Heterochromia, Maddie said. Ava nodded and continued. Heterochromia. So, you know, dog, mutt, hellhound. I flinched and I could feel Star pat my shoulder softly as I closed my eyes, fearing they were to see them shift to a dark gray that they were turning under my eyelids. She continued. And, you know, to try and add fuel to the fire... I heard a few saying you had no dad, like that's anything to make rumors about. Jerks. She mumbles softly. I could feel Star grip my shirt tightly. My eyes were turned to white as I opened them to look at her. She had her head down and tears forming in her eyes. I softly pull her close, wrapping my arms around her and hugging her. Uh, sorry, Ava said softly, looking at the ground. I didn't realize the soft tears running down my face before Star looked up at me and asked if I was okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Are you? She nodded and smiled at me, forcing herself to stop crying. I knew the dad comment got to her. She missed him more than anyone since she didn't get to know him too well. She was super little when it all happened. The car crash and hearing on the news that her dad had died. I shook my head and hugged her again, trying to comfort her, knowing she was trying really hard not to continue crying. Hey, I don't mean to distract, but... I know who started it, if it counts any, Sierra said softly. I was still looking at Star as my eyes flickered black and those words returning bleh. I was still looking at Star as my eyes flickered to black at those words, returning to white before I turned to them, asking a bit more sternly than I wanted. Tell me. Star patted my back softly, making me aware of my strength again. Taking a small breath in, I stood up before she continued. It was Jason and Devin, those two weird kids. You know, the one with the streak in his hair and the, the tall one. She continued. I stopped listening after she said who it was. Star was looking at me with a look of regret for not trusting my paranoia. I smiled at her, turning away from the others as my eyes started to turn red. Star saw and quickly jumped up. E Emma, wait! She spoke softly. I closed my eyes, not wanting to glare back at her and have the others see my eyes. I reached for the door handle, ignoring her words as Sierra finished her sentence. I told you they were no good, Star. I mumbled, walking out the door. She stood there, frowning softly as I walked down the halls, looking at the ground as I walked towards the office. 
Jason and Devin seemed to be waiting for me halfway down the hall. I had my fists clenched in my pockets, fire from my built-up anger trying to burn its way to the surface. I glare up at them as they block my way. There were two ways this could go, and I hoped I could just stop this now. I take a quick deep breath in and look up at them, hiding the anger in my eyes. What's up? I say, playing stupid. Their smiles grew as they looked between themselves. Oh, nothing. Jason laughed softly before he continued. Just heard back from my dad. He put more emphasis on the word, rubbing in the feelings. I glared at him. He said he's got some new chew toys. I thought a mutt like yourself would like to know. He laughed as he saw my eye twitch in anger. I closed them, hiding how red the color in my eyes was turning. I recently got a new dog, if you're looking to find a friend who wouldn't get disgusted by those eyes, Devin said, smirking. I push back my anger as I smile. If I was going to try and end this by putting them in their place, it was now. <laughs> That's rich. I start grabbing their attention. Jason had widened his stance and stopped laughing. <laughs> I know I'd run away at the first sight of you guys. Devin's smile was wiped clean. And yeah, I may not have a dad, but that's not my fault. What are your guys' excuses for not getting any friends? I felt my eyes burning, the pain of holding my power back. I continued to smile as Jason's eyes filled with shock. As my eye color turns to a deep red, I push past them and continue to talk. Sorry, I can't stick around to chat. I have somewhere important to be. I say as my smile softens. A few steps later, and I see Jason and Devin glaring at me, hatred and anger filling their eyes and melting their facial expressions into some sort of disgust. I look back ahead of me as I walk, anger finally turning to sadness as I teared up far enough ahead of them that they wouldn't see. Jerks. I could only wait and hope that they didn't want to bite off more than they could chew. I walk down the hall, wiping my tears, and letting my eyes turn red as the halls were empty now. I didn't care about class, it was just gym, and I never needed to participate to be stronger. I looked up at the office sign and walk in. The receptionist was there and smiled at me as I walked by to the principal's office. I don't doubt she knew why I was there. Rumors spread fast, and I wouldn't be surprised if they got around to the teachers already. I knock on the door and hear the vice principal's voice call out. It lifted my spirits a bit. The principal was a little scary, but the vice principal was super nice. She was much shorter than the principal, and had pretty black and brown hair. It almost looked like a calico's cat's fur. She always wore things with a soft yellow to them, matching her soft gold eyes. She was super understanding of who and what I was. My mom always told at least one principal in every school what I was. Thankfully, she knew most of the principals personally, so they were trustworthy and understanding. Come in. I snap back to reality as she repeats herself. I shake my head and open the door. <laughs> Welcome. I've been waiting for you to drop by. It's nice to know how tolerant you are. I would have come to the office days ago. I shrug, feeling chills run up my spine as I think about why I caved. The tears in Star's eyes made me more angry, and now that I knew who started it, <sighs> I shake my head and breathe in deeply a few times before looking up at her nodding. Well, when it gets Star involved, I know it's gone too far. I couldn't care less how they affect me. She glared down at me, noticing the lie in my voice. I grin softly. Okay, yeah, I care that those kids are telling rumors about me. You know why I'm terrified, but god, I hate seeing them pick on innocent kids like Star. My eyes flicker black before I groan louder, angry at myself for letting it get me fired up. I put my hands to my eyes, my palms pushing against them, trying to ground myself. She waited patiently until I was calm again before she spoke. I already have some teachers on it, disciplining kids more if they're caught, and waiting to be there to discipline Jason and Devin. We know they started these. She smiles at me and organizes some paperwork. Year after year, school was the same. The vice principals were nice, principals scared me, and... They looked down upon me like any other troublemaker. Bullies would get dealt with two or more times a month before just starting up again the next month, let alone if a bully found out where we lived. That was twice that that happened. Star would get picked on going to and from school, and our house was egged a few times. If the teachers couldn't do anything, or if they gave up as some did halfway through the year, it was always the same telling me that sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. 
It angered me more and more every time I heard it. Those words did hurt. Every time, and yeah, broken bones will heal, but you never forget some words. I think Jason and Devin knew the teachers were planning to do something to stop them, breaking them up at every chance they could get and stopping any whispers from them in class because they started to pick on me and Starmore. Star wouldn't tell me what they were doing to her because she kept saying it was nothing and worrying about me, but I could see more bruises on her shins than usual. I know she's clumsy, but not that clumsy. They were tripping me in the halls, putting their feet out, hitting my shins, and causing me to faceplant. I dropped my books more times than I can count because of them. Whether it was from tripping or them grabbing and pushing my books out of my arms, I started to learn how to hide in crowds and catch my footing again real quick once they wouldn't stop. Although it wouldn't stop me from having to run and hide in the bathroom if I felt myself losing control. Once Star noticed I was missing classes to calm myself down, she started walking with me, but I only got angrier when it happened to her instead of me.